We discovered that SNP leaders have destroyed more evidence against Nicola Sturgeon, with over 60% of Scots saying that the First Minister must resign, and we talk about why the British government are wasting over £2 million on a new media room. Hello everyone and welcome to today's first programme. I am back and I'm feeling much better. Uh, let's talk about the latest that we have from Scottish politics and this Nicola Sturgeon scandal. Before we start talking about that, if you are a member of this channel, watch to the end of the video. I'm going to repeat the update that I've been giving in the last couple of days about the membership in case you've missed it. Uh, and also tonight, 8pm, we have a live stream. Don't forget. Now, let's go and talk about Alex Salmond and Nicola Sturgeon once again. A quick summary. Alex Salmond was accused, he had the allegation against him a few years ago, that went down, he was found not guilty, and then uh, they discovered that Nicola Sturgeon and her team, her government, pursued this case against Salmond, even though her lawyers, the governmental, uh, government lawyers actually said that don't do this, you're going to waste over half a million pounds of taxpayers' money, you're going to lose, they did it anyway. Destroyed some evidence because the head of civil service says that she takes notes during each meeting and then she destroys them straight away. Don't know why, but that's what she does generally. Yeah. And uh, now we have new evidence, thanks to the mail, saying that crucial evidence about these meetings uh, have just been hidden. Now they're saying, on the one hand, the head of civil service, uh, Leslie Evans, destroys her notes. Now they're saying that they didn't even take minutes during these meetings between the lawyers and uh, the uh, head of civil service as well as Nicola Sturgeon as first minister. This is getting quite embarrassing. Now, what this uh, article actually talks about, which we still haven't really heard anything in the, in the BBC about this, is that the deputy first minister, John Sweeney, admitted that no minutes were made of these two key government meetings between the legal team and the first minister as well as Leslie Evans. Now, the Scottish Conservatives now claim that Nicola Sturgeon and Scotland's top civil servant met with lawyers to discuss the Alex Salmond issue. Now, Douglas Ross, who is the leader of the Tories in Scotland, is now accusing the first minister of a cover-up and concealing crucial evidence. And so this is a, a new thing that, you know, and we knew that the evidence was already hidden. We knew that Nicola Sturgeon has a bad memory, apparently. Uh, but now, when we have a situation where Leslie Evans, who is the permanent secretary, I mean, we say head of civil service, she's not technically head of civil service because we have one civil service across the country, but in, in terms of Scottish government, uh, she manages that. Uh, that's a whole different point because we now have the First Minister, Nicola Sturgeon, uh, last night facing growing calls to resign again after it emerged that, you know, none of these meetings actually had minutes. No one took any minutes, even though this is a normal thing to do. Now, the problem is that uh, th these conversations, one of them was on the 2nd of November, the other one was on the 13th of November 2018. Now, we're talking about a time when, at this point, Nicola Sturgeon knows about these allegations against Alex Salmond. She was apparently told in March. She doesn't remember that. She remembers that she was told in April. Now, as if that actually changes it much, because it's not really just about the dates. One, it's about the fact that she's lied, apparently, to the Scottish Parliament. This is what the Conservatives and Alex Salmond claim. And uh, that one thing is lying and misleading Parliament. If that's true, she has to resign. Secondly, the cover-up. Keep covering up. Where are the minutes? Where are the emails? <laughs> and this is the biggest issue that they're now facing. And I think at this point... Uh, the growing calls to resign is going to continue and we're going to talk about this campaign that's now started cross-party but one of the members of the uh, Scottish Parliament Donald Cameron said that I have acted as counsel for the Scottish government before at consultations everyone takes notes it is inconceivable that these minutes don't exist but you know the Scottish government say that you know they deny that this is not a normal uh, thing to do I don't understand this so is this is a normal activity do you ever take minutes? Are there, are there any sort of uh, meetings that have actually been recorded, uh, whether it's legal or just you know policy meetings? This is a this is actually opening a door to a whole different thing. And if everything goes badly for Nicola Sturgeon, it won't just be her that's going to go down. Obviously, her deputy will go down. Her own husband, who's at the head of the the SNP, will go down, and a number of other civil servants will have to go as well. Now, as we said, this cross-party unionist campaign has now started with billboards and signs across uh, Scotland, hashtag resign Sturgeon. That campaign is growing massively. 
um, up to a point where there are people who are supporters or were supporters of the SNP who are now changing their mind. Now, the latest that we now hear is that Scotland's chief law officer ordered the search of top civil servants' uh, office for Alex Salmond's uh, complaint documents. Now, this happened when it comes to Leslie Evans, who's again at the top of the civil service, and her team, the senior civil servants around it. Now, this search actually has now um, happened, and we now, again, this is Sky News reporting this, uh, saying that they've seen uh, records of a legal hearing in which counsel, acting for the government, uh, said that the Lord Advocate instructed the complete search of entire electronic... <laughs> so this happened. Uh, they've gone through all the, all the, you know, the office and everything that they had, and now they're saying, for example, like the, the Scottish government has responded by saying that uh, Leslie Evans in terms of how she's been handling the whole thing and in all the accusations, saying any accusation that she withheld information is categorically untrue. That's not true, is it? Because Leslie Evans herself confirmed that she has basically withheld information by destroying the minutes, by destroying the notes that she took in the meetings. So technically speaking, where is the information? It hasn't been published. She doesn't remember them. Because she said, you know, oh, I've destroyed the minutes. I, I don't, I don't really know. So what uh, the Scottish government are saying here is absolutely a lie, and someone has to tell them that because they're losing support across the country. Now we are seeing that you know the Times have reported the latest poll uh, of uh, Scottish voters and their opinion on the leadership of the Scottish politics. This doesn't look good. Firstly, the question has Nicola Sturgeon been entirely honest about the Alex Salmond affair? 35% say yes, 40% say no. Now, obviously, these are all just opinions, and uh, but this is what people are thinking because you know these people will be voting, not just in the upcoming election, but in the future elections as well. Now, when it comes to should, should Sturgeon resign now, it's actually 35% yes, 51% no, but should she resign if she found, uh, she's found to have broken the ministerial code, 61% say yes. So the people are just actually waiting for this confirmation, and then they're going to go and uh, stand against Nicola Sturgeon. And should Scotland become independent? 46% yes, 47% no. So the Scottish uh, referendum 2.0, or the recent 2.0, is not really likely at this point. Every single day, the support is collapsing for the Scottish nationalists. And, um, but there is a whole point about the media and how they've been reporting this. The media, whether it's the press or the actual broadcast media, they're all over the place. A lot of them don't know how to report this on Scottish politics. The rest of them are just talking about nonsense. This is the mirror. This is what we had in the mirror. Rishi Sunak hands 90% of £1 billion new towns fund cash in budget to Tory seats. So you look at this headline, you're like, oh, okay, scandal. Rishi Sunak, oh yeah, cronies. We've had problems with cronies in, in this government. Quite recently, actually, with certain contracts, this is not one of those. This is a, again the classic mainstream press and media misleading a story, and we have to call them out, regardless of which side it is, which party it is. But now they're saying that Rishi Sunak has been forced to deny that handing uh, budget bonuses to Tory MPs, saying that almost 90% of these towns have Tory Conservative MPs in them. Out of the 45 uh, town briefing, uh, but, sorry, benefiting from the this one billion pounds fund. Now, 40 have at least one Tory MP and around half of the towns are in the so-called Red Wall Northern uh, seats that used to be Labour and now they're Conservative. Right, let me give a lesson to people at the Mail and, you know, socialists. Two issues. One, <laughs> these areas might have a Conservative MP now, but the local councils, local authorities are controlled by Labour. So don't spin it. The, the money that's going towards local authorities are controlled by Labour. So the majority are actually still Labour controlled. Two, all these Tory seats, they were Labour seats until yesterday. And there's a reason that they became blue, they became Conservative, because the Labour Party let them down. And there's a reason the money's going there, because of, you know, again, they're deprived areas. A lot of these areas are deprived. So they need the money, regardless of who the MP is. Um, and yes, there is a point when it comes to backbenchers lobbying for their constituencies. That happens on, from every party and every policy and each, each constituency MP wants to make sure that their area gets more money and you know more attention. That's normal. 
And there are you know, some conservative MPs who have a better relationship with the Downing Street than Labour MPs. The same thing happened under Tony Blair and New Labour, the other way around. But don't spin it, say that you know, this is some sort of scandal when you know, the, the, all these areas are controlled by the Labour Party. If you want to criticise this government, criticise them properly. We just heard that Downing Street are spending millions of pounds of taxpayers' money to create a new media briefing room. So they're going to have these uh, daily press briefings like as if it's the White House, we're in like Washington DC all over again. Uh, even though we don't really have a presidential system where the head of state is gonna have to give press briefings, but they're gonna do press briefings every day. And they announced they've spent more than 2.6 million pounds to just create this room. It's a media briefing room, 2.6 million pounds. What is this room? Is it some sort of Star Trek set? I, I, don't, I really have no idea why the cabinet office and Downing Street thought this would be a good idea, especially now, especially what's happening with the financially this country and the budget. I really, really want to know what they spent it on. How, how can a room cost that much? You know, even if it were a few hundred thousand pounds, I don't understand, you're gonna need some certain equipment. Really, 2.6 million pounds, this is how you actually hold the government to account. When they mess up, you expose it, you call them out. You don't spin stories and create fake stories about this. Now. Um, as I said, 8 p.m. we're going to have a live stream. And uh, as you've seen, because of uh, everything that's been happening, an economic hit that uh, small local businesses have received, unfortunately. Uh, every now and then I've uh, given shout outs to certain small British local businesses. Uh, today there's another one. And as Mother's Day is coming up uh, this weekend, uh, I want to give a shout out to uh, Bloom's Floral Design. Now, this is actually quite personal to me and uh, so I hope you don't mind me giving a shout out to this specific business uh, because it's my mother's business. Uh, my mom was actually a nurse until quite recently uh, at Great Ormond Street and uh, the she, she wasn't able actually to take the pressure and uh, she's getting older so she wanted to take a break. Her background was in flower arrangement and she's gone back to it. She started her own uh, small business uh, doing flower arrangements and it's actually it's going quite well but obviously uh, right now, local small British businesses, they're not, you know, they're suffering. And it, it's a bit of a struggle. As you guys know, I try not to make this channel too London centric, but this business is actually based in London. So uh, deliveries are just for London and, you know, Kent and Surrey, uh, anything kind of around Greater London. My mum decided to actually uh, do a package for Mother's Day. So if you guys want to actually check out her website, I'll put the link in the description. Uh, so if you're around London or Southeast, uh, and if you plan to uh, get something for Mother's Day this weekend, uh, make sure to uh, check out the contact page, uh, either email her or you know, give her a phone call or a text message, and uh, she will try her best to uh, send you a delivery, uh, I think within the day, within the next day, it's like Amazon Prime basically. Uh, so yeah, if you're going to check it out, support small British businesses, especially during these times. And uh, as I said, tonight, 8 p.m., we're gonna have a live stream. Members of the channel, last thing. I've mentioned this, we, uh, <laughs> Decided to simplify the membership process. We're gonna have, we just have one tier now, everyone on the same tier, uh, because uh, it was too complicated and a lot of people who were paying a lot more, but were still getting similar uh, benefits. We now made it easier, but unfortunately, I had a chat with YouTube to say, you know, if they could transfer everyone from the higher tiers to a lower tier, supporter level. Unfortunately, they couldn't do it. So those tiers are gone. So your membership might have expired. If not, then downgrade it to supporter. But just, just check now, if you're not a member right now, that means YouTube has canceled it. So all you have to do is just click on the join button or click on the link in the description uh, in the, to become a member again, because we have added more perks and benefits. We do have our weekly Q and A's, which will be tomorrow. We have our video calls on uh, Wednesdays. We're gonna ha now have a new feature. We are introducing a newsletter, a weekly newsletter as well and, uh, and 8 p.m., we're gonna have a big announcement for everybody, not just the members, but all the sub uh, subscribers of this channel. So make sure to tune in at 8 p.m. Uh, for that and also the latest updates that we have for you guys. Thanks again for watching. I'm Maya TC, and I'll see you guys in the next video.